Okay. Okay. We'll work on that. All right. Chapter 5 2 Intentional Torts, Negligence, and Strict Liability. The essential question for this section of the notes is can you identify at least six intentional torts? And when I say identify, I want you to be able to identify and um, pull them apart and, and explain um, what they are and, and how they are classified. Very impressive. Okay. So, um, we read what's your verdict on page 85, and actually we're going to skip ahead here. These are the these are the torts that we've already discussed. Okay, this is part three of this theory: um, assault, battery, false imprisonment, and defamation. We're going to cover today invasion of privacy, trespass to land, conversion, interference with contractual relations, and fraud. So, we're going to. We're, no, we're not going to cover. Um, we're not going to co cover negligent torts yet. We're going to come all the way down and go right to invasion of privacy. Okay, so first, <coughs> invasion of privacy is uninvited intrusion into an individual's personal relationships and activities in a way likely to cause shame or mental suffering. Okay, in an ordinary person. There is a clause that a person who is in the spotlight for either reasons of governmental um, involvement or fame uh, because they are a quote-unquote celebrity in the spotlight um, or if a, just a person um, who has become famous for some reason, okay, they are not considered ordinary. They have a different level of, um, a different expectation of what people will be interested in them, um, how many cameras will be following them. Etc. It's not my favorite thing. No. Okay. So um, this is invasion of privacy. Okay. Um, and then we have here all of these cameras. Um, these are set up to be watching you. Now the idea of Big Brother. Okay. Do you what? Do you know what Big Brother is? Not the show, but maybe the show. The idea of of big brother that's watching you. No? Never heard that? The eye in the sky. Okay, It's the idea that, that there is someone watching us when we are out and about um, standing in an intersection or walking the streets um, when we're at a park. Okay, things like that. There is an, an understanding and especially after um, the Patriot Act was passed in 2002 I believe um, which allowed more government um, surveillance of people um, both online and in person okay to to be stop doing that please okay oh for the love hmm. Okay, so if it's on the internet, it is in private. These are good words to live by. Understand that whatever you put out there online, that is, is part of now the public permanent, permanent public record. Okay, you can delete it, but chances are good it still exists somewhere out there. Yes, sir. What's up? You weren't done. Oh, sorry. <coughs> Okay, um, so invasion of privacy is when a, a, an uninvited person is intruding into personal relationships and activities um, that's causing undue stress or shame or um, mental anguish on a person um, who is, you know, just an ordinary person. Okay, um, now we are saying if it's on the internet, it is in private. So remember that anything posted to Facebook or Reddit, or, um, I don't know, Tumblr, or Instagram, which is the new kind of 
um, teenage place where they make mistakes and they are recorded forever by the internet. Um, all of that is it's public. Even though you have a password and you uh, have some privacy settings, you need to understand that what you put out there becomes just part of the of your um, online footprint. And so, therefore, you need to um, kind of keep that in mind. Okay. Um, unnecessary publicity publicity regarding personal matters. So. Um, these are what we call paparazzi when, you know, all the people come around and they want to take pictures. Like we said, celebrity um, has, has its downside, and this is one of the downsides. People want to follow them around and want to know about their personal lives, and they go on a date and there's, you know, 500 people outside waiting to take a picture of them when they leave the restaurant, that kind of thing. Um, and when you become part of the, uh, you know, the celebrity, um, even even people who are um, being tried, uh, Casey Anthony had this, where everywhere she went um, while she was being um, tried, and then even after that, now that she's been acquitted of her murder um, conviction, or I'm sorry, her murder um, accusation, everywhere she goes, she was being followed uh, by people, okay, but this becomes invasion of privacy. Um, this is another item. This is, has to do with a two-way mirror. Okay, now this is just an example of what a two-way mirror is, in case you didn't know. But a two-way mirror, you can um, see through the mirror on one side, but on the other side, it's a, it is just a mirror. So this is what a two-way mirror is. And they have them oftentimes in a police station while they're, invest, you know, while they're um, interrogate, interrogating a suspect. Um, they'll be behind, be behind um, a glass partition. It looks like a mirror, but you can still see through one. Um, next door in child care, they have a two-way mirror over there. So while the kids are playing, the, the preschool is playing, um, they can go in and it's called their observation room. They can see you know, the kids playing, but the kids can't see them. That's a two-way mirror. Now, that is not invasion of privacy because it's being used in, in an ed educational way, and um, the participants are aware of it, like the parents are aware. Um, that, that it's being used that way. Now, if there were a two-way mirror in, say, a bathroom, that would be a different, you know, set of circumstances, correct? Or in some kind of ch in a changing room in a um, in a department store, okay? That would be a different scenario. So that would become an invasion of privacy. Um, when a defendant, or I'm sorry, when a person is a suspect is in the police station and they are in that interrogation room. They, um, they do not have the right to you know, privacy there. Okay? There is no expectation of privacy. They, they need to be aware that anything they say can and will be used against them. So they need to be aware that they could be, be recorded or um, be watched, that kind of thing. Okay? But um, this is invasion of privacy. Um, another part of this um, is that <coughs> this is freedom from commercial exploitation of um, name, picture, or endorsement without permission. So this is a Dolphin County Technical School picture. This is a student of ours. And this picture is online on our website. Okay. This is a media permission form. Now this is from Carnivan School of the Air, which I found online. But the point is, it's the, almost identical to our um, media permission form, which you all are asked to sign and, and to complete every year. Now, Rob, remember when you didn't have one, and they, and they took a picture of you and they wanted to put you in the calendar, and what happened? They brought the form into you and they said, you can't be in the calendar unless you, unless you signed the form and got his mom to sign the form. He needed to get parent um, permission, because he's under the age of 18, to be in the calendar, to be um, in the calendar? I think you were. I think you were. If you didn't sign the form, then you're not. Okay? Um, same thing with, with uh, our internet. What? Our, I don't Anyway. Um, so, or you might have been on the newsletter. That might, might be what you were in. It might have been the newsletter. But anyway, you needed permission um, to be featured in one of these um, one of these printed or online 
um, media items. Hershey Park will ask, uh, or I'm sorry, it is stated on their tickets that you um, could potentially be used as, um, you know, I can't remember. Or maybe they have to come, maybe they ask you, that's what it is. They ask you if they can use your photographs, but they have to get permission from you. They can't just use you, you know, if you're watching TV and all of a sudden you see yourself in a Hershey Park ad, um, they would have had to contact you. So generally they have families of park members and they do photo ops in that way. When you see those commercials, those are people who are, you know, have signed up to do it, okay? Um, anyway, so this is your right to privacy for um, not being exploited. You can't use, you know, you couldn't make an ad and say, Michael Jordan loves, you know, Kit Kat bars. Kit Kat couldn't produce that commercial without Michael Jordan's permission. Okay, and generally there's the exchange of money and that kind of thing. But that's a um, right to privacy. Questions? Okay. Trespass to land. This is our next one. Entry onto the property of another without the owner's consent. So this can be simply walking onto the property, or it could be um, what we have dumping trash, breaking windows. But intent is, um, intent is required. They must intend to be on the property. Okay? Um, now, if I'm walking and I think, <clears throat> and I'm just walking along here, and my friend pushes me into the lawn of another, per you know, of a person, and I'm suddenly trespassing, was that my intent to be trespassing? No, I was walking on the sidewalk. I was not intending to trespass. <coughs> However, I am out and I am walking what I think is the, um, <clears throat> the my property line. Okay, I think I'm on my property because I'm pretty sure this is where they said to the pear tree. And so I'm out walking and the owner of the next property over comes out and says, you're on my property. Okay, and I say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Is that accurate? Do I have, did I have intent to be on their property? Did I? Was I purposefully walking on property? Now, just because I didn't know it wasn't mine, ignorance of the law is never an excuse. Okay, so even though I didn't quote unquote mean to be on their property, uh, it's up to me. I need to know where my property line is. Okay, so then my intent would have been um, there. Okay, now, if I'm just walking and nothing bad happens and I don't damage any of their things, um, then really there, there's not a whole lot there um, to sue over. Okay, but if I'm on their property and I am damaging their, you know, say I, I am stepping on their flowers or I'm in, damaging their grass, I'm allowing my dog to defecate on their lawn, okay, um, or like we said, dumping trash, breaking windows, that kind of thing. Okay. And the dumping trash and breaking windows. I don't have to be physically on the property. I can just throw my trash into the other person's property. So I never stepped on the property, but I just tossed my trash over there. Have I still trespassed? Yes, I have. I throw a baseball, it hits a window. Okay, Or you're like my son and you throw a rock over the house because that's what you do when you're six and you miss and you break a window, now that's not a good example because that's his own house. He truly almost died that day. I said, why would you throw a rock at our house? I wasn't throwing it at it, Mom. I was throwing it over. <laughs> over. I know, right? A two-story house, and I'm six. It makes total sense. Anyway, okay, so trespass the land. Now, so what is your verdict from page 85? During deer hunting season, Hart drove miles into the country in search of game. He parked his pickup truck along a dirt road, he climbed a fence, he hiked into the woods, and he thought the fence was, or thought the land was part of a national forest. Um, but it actually belonged to Quincy. Quincy had posted no trespassing signs. However, I don't believe Hart saw the signs, but um, when Quincy comes out and goes, dude, what are you doing on my lawn? 
I see you be like, why y'all I'm alone? Anyway, did Hart commit an intentional tort? Why? Yes, because he climbed over the fence and he was on the property and ignorance of the law is never, a dis uh, never an excuse. Okay, so just because he didn't quote unquote know doesn't make it okay that he was on his lawn, on his property. Okay, so. All right. Um, he was guilty even though he didn't know it was private property. Okay, so he's going to shoot on the property and that's not allowed. There's no hunting allowed. The end. Questions? Comments? Okay. Conversion. This one is rather complicated, um, but it's, I mean, it's actually, anyway, um, it's a violation of the right to control possession and use of possession. Okay, so this example here, it says, which intentional tort are you? You got my car painted pink without permission. And then the guy inside is saying, I treated it as though it were my own. I borrowed your car and I painted it pink. I have, uh, I'm guilty then of conversion, okay? The wrongful possession or dispossession of another's property as if it were one's own, okay? Um, or using um, property um, in a manner inconsistent with another's rights. Okay, so if he used the car as a boat, okay, that's not going to go over well. Or use the lawnmower as a car. What the hair is someone? Anyway, okay, so the, that is conversion. Here's another example. Okay, a dry cleaner. A dry cleaner accidentally gives the clothes to the wrong person. Okay, so this guy is super happy. He's got his clothes and he's going to leave. Okay, and then Rob comes in and says, here's my ticket. Where are my clothes? And the dry cleaner goes, oh my gosh, I don't know where your clothes are. I must have, you know, this lady who's new must have given them to that guy. Okay, super sorry. All your clothes are gone. Okay, that's conversion. It, it did not necessarily have to be intended, okay, but um, like it's stealing without intent in some ways. So they took, they deprived Rob of his clothes. I know, it's not right, but it's true. And then um, the dry cleaner would then be responsible for replacing the, at least the value of the clothes to Rob, okay. So Rob would need to know what the, what the value of his, clo his clothing was. Okay. And last one. I want you to tell me this. Okay, oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree. Why are you a tort of conversion? What are the circumstances that would make cutting down this tree a tort of conversion? Other than the fact that that's like a four-year-old child. But why would that become a tort of conversion? on somebody's property. Now, just on somebody's property, what else could be at play here? They are trespassing, okay? If it's on somebody's property and that property was a tree farm and they, call, yeah, and each tree was $85 to cut down and have as a Christmas tree, then that is, that is um, the tort of, of conversion. They took possession of it. They would be required to pay for the tree, yes, sir. Can you go to the bathroom? Can you go quick? I don't know if you can go quick. Can you just wait? We're almost done. Can, can you just wait till we're done? We're almost done. Okay. Interference with commercial, with I'm sorry, contractual relations. Okay, so parties who breach a contract, they must pay damages under contract law. All right, which we will discuss contract law. That is a separate kind of law. It's very in-depth. But we also have third-party um, people who encourage the breach of contract, and then they are responsible for the interference with relations. So Martha Stewart here, okay, she has a home goods line that she sold in Macy's. Macy's felt that she was exclusive to their store. However, she also went, entered into a contract with J.C. Penney, okay? And so then Macy said, no dice, okay? We deserve the exclusive contract, <coughs> okay? 
So who would be responsible in this case? Um, I should say Stuart instead of steward. Who would be responsible in this case of the interference with contractual relations? Okay. In this case, it would be J.C. Penney, who is interfering with Martha Stewart's contract here with Macy's. Okay. So the um, what they've done is they filed an injunction, and there is a link to this here. Um, but they filed an injunction. What's an injunction from Chapter Two? Do you remember? Not exactly. It's stopping something. It's it's a it's an order to stop something to make sure that it um, does not continue. So the Macy's did um, file an injunction and got it passed through um, for J C Penney to stop selling Martha Stewart goods. Okay. Is my? Yeah, you can go now. Just run over. Just go. Yeah. Okay. I don't think so. Okay, so that is Martha Stewart, um, the example of interference with contractual relations. Um, at this point, J.C. Penney is the one interfer interfering with her, contra uh, her contract between um, her and Macy's, but um, a tort nonetheless. Okay. Last one, fraud. This occurs when there is an intentional or recklessly made misrepresentation of an existing important fact. Okay, the misrepresentation must be made with intent. So, an accident um, <coughs> or un, uh, someone who did not know and, and truly believed that they were um, operating 
um, with correct facts would be different than um, someone who is fraudulent and with intent of making someone enter into a contract um, and the other person must rely on the misrepresentation. So a salesperson who is um, acting as an expert in the field and trying to get you to purchase something or sign into a contract um, and then using fraudulent um, information, okay? So the, the, um, the two little um, graphics here, okay? The fraud triangle, there is an opportunity, there is pressure, and there is rationalization. And with all three of these, we can force or pressure a person into entering into a fraudulent, um, you know, scheme. Um, and then we have the idea of a scam here, scheming, crafty, aggressive, and malicious, okay? Con artists, that's what we're referring to. A fraudulent, um, a person who is having you enter into um, a contract that is not in your best interest, um, with the idea of defrauding you, of getting money out of you um, unfairly. Okay, so that is fraud. Any questions? Okay, um, your ticket out the door for this will be to answer the essential question, which was to list um, six of the intentional torts. And then your assignment for the rest of the per this period is find a current event news story that describes an intentional tort. Okay? And then using the worksheet that I'll give you, you're going to identify the four elements of intentional tort. Okay? And you're going to explain the scenario as it took place. All right? There is a summary assignment at the bottom. I'm asking you to write a summary in paragraph format that will explain the tort that you found, okay? Um, news stories, there's a ton of them. I think on WGAL.com, there are about eight examples of tort, um, intentional torts that have happened. Remember, um, a tort can be something that is also a crime. So I'm not looking for a crime. I'm looking for something that we would be then using as a, a civil case, uh, something that we would see in civil court, okay? that is a tort. So that is your assignment. Um, your ticket out the door is to answer your um, essential question, which is to identify six types of intentional torts. And then the assignment, which is due, if it's not due today, if it's not finished today at the end of shop, which it should be, you should have plenty of time to get it done. If it's not finished at the end of shop, you will, um, it will be due on Monday morning, first thing when you get here. Okay? Questions? All right. And this concludes Theory 5-2.